This is where it all begins. This is the start of the Henley Royal Regatta course. The finish is 2,112 metres away. And this can be some of the most nerve-wracking moments of your career. One of the things that makes this place unique is how close the crowd are. You'll be on the start here and there'll be people sitting over there on the grass dabbling their toes in the water without a care in the world. Your opposition will be a few metres away on the other side. If mind games are going to happen, this is where it's going to take place. Go! So if you've never been to a start before, the power of these things is unbelievable. Left us for dead. So these two crews have started brilliantly straight. The trick is you've got to stay like that all the way down the course. This is one of the quintessential views of the regatta course. Temple Island and the temple on it are absolutely beautiful. But if you're racing, you haven't got time for any of that. You're worried about where you are on the course and how close to the opposition. And unlike any other rowing race, these are what divide the river. You can probably get away with a glancing blow against one of the booms, those floaty bits. But if you hit one of these bad boys, it's pretty much game over. Blades scraping the moss off the booms down. Oh, there we are, clattered into the booms. So this is the barrier. It's the first timing point on the course and it's the first landmark, really, that the commentators are going to talk about. The barrier is operated from this signal box out in the river, so there'll be at least one person in that box. And it draws a timing line across to those grey posts on the towpath where there's still a cattle grid. That is the literal barrier. For the crews concerned, it's the first chance to look across to the other boat and decide, are we fast or are they? And if they're the faster ones, what are you going to do about it? So we're approaching the Forley box, which is halfway through the course. At this point, the navigation channel over on the far side, that's very close, so you'll be getting noises of jazz bands, Elvis impersonators, people on the top deck of boats drinking champagne. Over on this side, there's a lot of crowd noise and a lot of hubbub coming off this side and the occasional whiff of a barbecue on the air. So all up the course, there are these signal boxes. This is a three-quarter mile, and the signaler's job is to look across the race and decide who's ahead. Now, for me, theoretically, I'm going to say that crew one, that's the towpath side, they're ahead. So number one goes up first, and crew two, that's the island side, they're going to be half a length behind. The theory is that you can sit all the way down there at the finish with a pair of binoculars and see exactly what's happening in the race. You see the number two's gone up there. That signals the crew on the buck stations ahead. And now that number one just overlapping. So this is the last few hundred metres of the course. You're into the enclosures. It's a cauldron. It's as close as you ever get to rowing in what feels like a stadium. Those grandstands during the racing hours will be packed and this is where the race is really going to hurt. But in front of all the people that matter most, you've got to dig in. So Great Britain win the Grands and you can see what it means to Phelan Hill. So this is us exactly on the finish line and don't forget Henley is pure gladiatorial absolute knockout. Either you've won and you're going through to another race the next day or you're out, you're going home or you're going to the bar.